Hello friends, my name is David, and you're watching Strange Things. The Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run stands out as one of the two iconic attractions within the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It is quite possibly the most interactive ride ever created by Disney's talented Imagineers. Offering visitors a completely immersive experience, the ride boasts elaborate sets, state-of-the-art animatronics, and a host of other surprises. No wonder people flock to Batu, eager to take part in the legitimate business venture managed by Onaka, shipping and selling top quality goods that are assuredly not stolen. Situated in the renowned Black Spire outpost, the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run was the inaugural ride to open this multi-billion dollar park expansion. Guests and fans alike soon discovered that what lay within surpassed the typical straightforward rides we've come to expect from Disney. Spoiler alert! This video is chock full of spoilers, so if you haven't experienced the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run yet, consider this your warning. However, if you're fascinated by cutting-edge technology and want to see how they pulled off this incredible ride, then you've come to the right place. Today, we embark on an in-depth exploration of one of the newest gems at Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios' The Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. We'll delve into its captivating history, shed light on the intricate details, and reveal the magic that brings it all to life. So, whether you're leisurely seated or eagerly standing in the queue line, which you're probably already doing, this is how the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run works. Get ready to be awestruck. History, similar to Star Wars, Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run was one of the two highly anticipated rides that opened within Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Each ride replaced a former land or section of land, extending into previously off-limits areas. Construction the preparation for the new land began with the closure and demolition of several attractions, including the Baccalaureate Tour, Lights Motors Action, and the Streets of America at Disney's Hollywood Studios in 2016. At Disneyland, Big Thunder Ranch and parts of the Rivers of America were cleared to expand. Construction progressed rapidly to meet the nearing opening year of the Twin Lands. During this time, details about the ride were scarce creating anticipation for fans eager to experience the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Some speculated that Smuggler's Run might be a successor to the infamous and ill-fated mission, Space at Epcot due to the appearance of four large rings in the show building. However, it turned out to be false, as the building took shape, revealing that some kind of screen was being integrated into the ride experience. Unlike Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run faced fewer snags in construction due to its relative simplicity. As time went on, fans and theme park enthusiasts even speculated that it might resemble the dome screen style ride of Harry Potter in their favorite journey located at various Universal parks, but this too proved to be incorrect. What was eventually revealed was an exciting screen-based interactive experience, allowing guests to board the Millennium Falcon and become pilots on an edge of your seat mission, traversing the galaxy. The anticipation for this ride only grew as more information became available promising an immersive and thrilling adventure for all Star Wars fans. Opening, the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run had its official opening on May 31, 2019, at Disneyland, and later on August 29, 2019, at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The grand opening attracted both media attention and decent crowds, with the new Twin Galaxies Edge attracting enthusiasts from far and wide. As visitors entered Onaka Transport Solutions for the first time, they were immediately impressed by the meticulous attention to detail. The massive, 1-2 scale Millennium Falcon itself was a sight to behold, but the equipment displayed inside the mechanic shop added to the awe-inspiring experience. Due to the height of the ride system and maintenance bays, the queue was cleverly designed with high ceilings creating an immersive atmosphere while allowing riders and guests in wheelchairs to reach the necessary height for loading onto the ride system. Q slash pre-show While the Q and pre-show experience in Smuggler's Run might not be as elaborate and over the top as those in Rise of the Resistance, it still had its tricks up its sleeve. As visitors await their turn, they are treated to the impressive Command Center show featuring Hondo Onaka. Hondo Onaka appears in a state-of-the-art, highly mobile animatronic form, reminiscent of the walking Olaf animatronic in Frozen Ever After. Perched on a slim-moving base, Hondo's electric A1000 figure can interact with the screens in front of him, overlooking a large projected hangar ceiling entrance. 
The clever use of a screen behind a rear window adds a sense of depth perception, making it appear as if Hondo is dynamically walking around rather than being fixed in one position. With the pre-show experience concluded, guests eagerly await the adventure that lies ahead as they embark on their very own thrilling mission aboard the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Chess Room As visitors enter the Chess Room photo op, they are transported into the iconic Millennium Falcon Chess Room, meticulously replicated with attention to every small detail. In this room, you can interact with a few props that make the Falcon come to life, adding to the immersive experience. The chess room is part of Disney's cluster boarding method for this ride, where multiple groups are brought in simultaneously, assigned a colored card, and then called over when it's time for their adventure. How it works? Now that we have a basic understanding of the queue and its effects, let's shed some light on the primary reason you're watching this video experiencing the thrill of piloting the Falcon and how they make it all work. After a short video briefing from Hondo, explaining where you'll be headed and what you'll be doing, you're ushered into the cabin to begin your journey across the galaxy. Initially, fans believed that there would be multiple identical tunnels leading to several identical ride pods, with riders quickly loading, experiencing the ride, unloading, and exiting in rapid succession. However, Disney opted for a more seamless approach to handling ridership, employing a clever trick with the cabin where riders are seated during their adventure. The cabin is mounted on what's known as an octopod motion base, which utilizes eight electric linear actuators working in harmony to move or jostle the cabin, simulating the movement of the Millennium Falcon. Each cabin boasts a view encompassed by a large dome screen, enhanced by multiple short throw projectors. As riders walk through the door and load into the setup, they may not realize that. They are actually boarding a large rotating carousel. This ingenious design allows Disney to increase capacity efficiently, accommodating more visitors and making sure everyone has a chance to experience the unforgettable journey aboard the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run Carousel To handle the high demand and increased capacity, Disney employs a large carousel comprising seven pod motion-based dome screen projector setups. Each setup is mounted on a slice of the carousel and is equipped with seven wheels and two motors, enabling rotation and movement along the round carousel. The use of 14 smaller motors, rather than relying on one large motor, allows for decentralization, making maintenance more convenient as individual motors can be easily replaced. Moreover, the modular design of each pod simplifies maintenance and potential removal when necessary. Full system numbers, to accommodate the popularity of the ride, Disney doesn't rely on just one carousel, they utilize four carousels in total. With each carousel holding seven pods, there are 30 pods spread across these four carousels. Additionally, two ADA-compliant pods are available one on each side of the ride. Furthermore, there are two identical chest rooms, and riders are directed to either the left or right chest room after the animatronic pre-show. The two carousels each serve these chest rooms, and the capacity can be managed by opening and closing access to the ride through the left main tunnel or a themed back room leading to a nearly identical tunnel. Loading when the doors open, six riders file into each pod, buckle up, and familiarize themselves with the controls based on their assigned positions. To determine which positions are filled, the pod's computer utilizes receipt sensors, ensuring smooth loading and unloading. The pod's motion base moves it back to align the door with the port when loading and unloading. Once the ride begins, the pod moves away from the load port, and the experience commences with a simulated rotation of the Falcon as it prepares to take off. Ride Sequencing Hondo instructs riders in their positions to perform certain tasks and guides them throughout the mission. The pod's computer, seated next to the projection dome, processes inputs from the buttons and levers inside and relays the information to the game system. It then renders resulting movements, information, and audio clips in real time, matching the motion of the motion base. The movement profile is determined by rider's actions and choices during the ride. Dynamic Sequencing the ride employs dynamic sequencing, making each ride experience unique and responsive to the actions of the riders. The pod's computer takes into account the positions that are filled and adjusts the ride accordingly. For the first half of the ride, most riders experience nearly identical scenarios. However, as the ride progresses, dynamic elements come into play, adapting the experience based on how riders interact with the game system. Stalling, to accommodate different ride durations and ensure smooth operations, stalling mechanisms are built into the ride. 
One method is a minigame involving asteroid collisions, allowing the Falcon to stall during the ride if needed. After the asteroid belt sequence, the pod lands back in Batu, and riders exit the ride, entering a replica corridor with only an exit, providing a seamless transition for the next group of adventurers. Extra features, as with many Disney attractions, Smuggler's Run includes Easter eggs and hidden features. Riders have discovered the famous Chewy mode, activated by pushing specific buttons before starting the journey, where Chewbacca takes over as the pilot's voice. While trying to crash the Falcon intentionally or not touching any controls may lead to unique experiences, the ride is designed to guide itself to ensure an enjoyable and thrilling adventure for all. As riders pilot the Millennium Falcon through the galaxy, the possibilities and excitement are boundless. In conclusion, the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is a masterfully crafted ride that weaves together numerous small details to provide an interactive and personalized galactic experience. Disney's dedication to pushing technological boundaries is evident in this attraction, showcasing their commitment to delivering some of the most technologically advanced rides in any theme park. This exhilarating adventure is set to captivate and delight riders for many years to come. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into how the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run operates. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'd also love to know what your favorite ride is, as I might consider making a video about it. Don't forget to check out our other How It Works videos in the icon above, featuring some of your beloved rides, such as Rise of the Resistance. If you found this video informative and entertaining, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay updated on our future content. Additionally, if you truly enjoyed the video, you can support us by joining our Patreon with contributions as little as $1 per month. Extra info, for those curious, cast members revealed that some of the wheels on the carousel pods are as wide as 4 feet and can weigh up to an astonishing 900 pounds. Moreover, the ADA pod provides a slightly different experience, as it remains stationary due to the carousel's tendency to flex if it moves too much. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos and also press the bell icon so that you receive notifications for our latest videos. For now, friends, please allow me to go to the next video. Goodbye.